No. <risa> mm, tema, I don't know. <laughs> What the te el, el tema <clears throat> that you going to, to speak or, or presentation? No. You have a presentation? We we will dance. Oh, really? We, will, uh -huh, we were practicing. That's nice. Good night, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Good How evening. Are you? Good evening. Good <laughs> evening. I oh, I... Selena, that I I was in a hurry because I I have to practice a dance with my friends. Uh, did you hear me? Did you hear me? No, no, no. Yes. I, go ahead. Okay. Uh, we we were practicing a dance with my friends because we will par pra participate in. Uh, in our friend's wedding the next week. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice. Thank you. It's very exciting, huh? Yes, and uh, uh, 13 minutes ago, I left uh, to the house when we were practicing the dance. <laughs> Oh. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're going to have a good time. When is the wedding? The the wedding is uh uh 18 February. 18 oh, February. The next week? Yeah. yeah. Oh, next week. Yeah. Yes. Okay. She she's a doctor and we we are a uh, co-workers and uh, she asked uh, um she asked for us uh she wants and um, we dance with with her uh -huh. in is in her wedding i i i oh. i want to say that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that's nice Okay. <laughs> it's always good to have a, a nice event with coworkers and friends and you can have a good time with. Yes, <laughs> we are uh, co-workers and, and very good friends. Oh, that's, that's good. Have you worked together for a long time? Uh, have you been? We, were, uh -huh. we, were, we, were work, we are working together. Uh, about five years because I I have twenty five years to mm, to uh, working in that hospital, but she she arrived uh, at the hospital about uh, five years ago. Oh, okay. That's a long time. No. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> so imagine now her life changed in two weeks. Well, in one week, right? <laughs> in one week. Uh, week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We will be dancing with, with her. Great. <laughs> That's well, thank you so much for connecting tonight. I know it's a little unusual to connect on Fridays, um, but it's just for uh for the reasons for INSA for the um, this year, it seems that they want to change and they want in module to be in the month, not to go from one month to the other, like in the years before. So because of that, that's why we're going to have class today, this Friday, and we're going to have class next Friday as well. Both Fridays. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes. Great. 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 Okay. Well, I'm glad to see some of you. <laughs> not everybody is here today, but it's okay. It's typical. It's, it's Friday and many people want to relax. So I I understand. Um, here, Patricia, can you please read what is the objective for today? Of course, teacher. So I can move. By the end of this session, participants will be able able to practice using past models and phrasal models of obligation. Okay, so today we're going to look at obligations, uh, obligations of positive and negative. Like your mom, 
you can think about it like your mom or your dad. They tell you things that you have to do or things that you are not permitted to do. Today, we're going to learn some of those expressions, very common and typical ways to express it. Like if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, no, 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 you, you are diabetic. You can't, you can't eat candy. You, you mustn't do this. Those are the things that we're going to learn today. So let's take a look at a small video and then we're going to get some ideas and learn some vocabulary on how to use it. Hi, we're about to study past models and phrase the models of obligation. Stay and watch the explanation. Past models and phrasal models of obligation. Should have, was supposed to, had to, and needed to all describe obligations in the past, although they sometimes have different uses. Okay, so the first thing that we want to see is take note. These are the expressions that are used. Should have, was supposed to, had to, and needed to. These are the ones that we're going to be looking at today, as well as the negative form. So we also have uh, didn't have to as a negative one. And that's the four, those are the ones that we have. I should have stayed home and studied. It was a good idea, but I didn't do it. I was supposed to be studying this weekend. It was required, but I didn't do it. I had to wear a uniform. We were forced to do this. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. There was no obligation. I thought I needed to have more clothes. I thought this was necessary. Past models and phrasal models. Should have is followed by a past participle, whereas was, were, supposed to, had to, didn't have to, I needed to, are followed by the simple form of the verb. Had to describe strong obligation in the past and suggest there was no choice. I had to water my plants. Was, were, not supposed to, suggest an expectation that the action was required or prohibited. It is comparable in meaning to wasn't, weren't allowed to. He was supposed to graduate last year. Should have suggest that the action was advisable, but was not done. Should not have suggest that the action was not advisable, but was done. He should have learned English before. Needed, did they need to, suggest that an action was necessary, but there was choice about doing it or not. She needed to exercise. Didn't have to means that there was not obligation to do the action. They didn't have to wake up early. Complete the following sentences with your own information. Then. Compare your answers in class with a partner. Before we go on and before we take a look, we saw several examples and they explained quite a few. But it's more important that you understand the difference of each one. Take a moment and read these. I should have, was supposed to, had to, didn't have to, and needed to. And make sure that it is clear and that you understand completely what is the meaning. If you have any questions or if you have any doubts and you just want to be sure, please ask. There is no problem with asking. Asking is great. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of, of information here. I think we have to, to practice a little bit more. In, in fact, before we practice, before we make groups in this moment, the idea is for each of us to make an example with each sentence to make sure that it's clear. So 
Um, Patricia is going to begin and Patricia is going to use should have to make a sentence. Selena is going to continue and Selena is going to use was supposed to in a sentence. Javier, you are after Selena, you are going to use had to, okay? After Javier is Dennis. Dennis is going to use didn't have to, okay? And then Evelyn is going to use needed to, needed to. Rafael also is going to give an example with should have, should have. And Anna, you're going to use was supposed to and give an example with supposed to. So this is to make sure that you understand and that you can give the class an example using that same grammar. Patricia, it's okay should have, or do you need more time to give a sentence? Give me a, a minute, please. Okay, no problem. Remember, all of these are in the past. All of them are the meaning in the past. None of them are present or future. All of them are <clears throat> past actions. Um, now, teacher, I should have to study English before, but I didn't. More or less. Very good, Patricia. The idea is correct, but not the grammar. It's correct. I should have studied English before, but I didn't. No, I should have to. That the two is not the part that is not necessary. So I should have studied in the past tense English before. Then you can add the details. Uh, but I didn't because I didn't have money or I, I was lazy or whatever reason. But that is the idea. What was a good idea to do before? Thank you, Patricia. Very nice. Thank you. Selena, please try what so, was supposed to, right? My mic is off. No problem. I was supposed to took a medicine, but I didn't. Good. Only the grammar. I was supposed to take. I was supposed oh, take. to take take medicine, but I didn't. Oh, suppose is the past. Yes, suppose is the uh -huh. past. So then uh -huh. the second verb, oh, like the uh, verb to be, is okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I try again. Okay. I, I was supposed to take a medicine, but I didn't. Good, Selena. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think Javier was next, if I remember. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. In, in that example, is a responsibility. You don't have the chance to, to, to do other things. You have to do what you. So my, my example is, I have to be. I had. I had to be early tomorrow, in the morning, at my job. No, Javier, you no. are mixing the grammar. You are using had is past. You are using tomorrow future. There's a little bit of confusion. Think about it like when you were a child, when you were a teenager. What were the things that were obligations in your house? Uh, um, what were your responsibilities in your house or in your school? Uh, wash the dishes. Then, correct. That is the verb. Now make it with the sentence with had to. I had to wash the dishes. Exactly. And then you add a compliment, more information. Go ahead, Javier. I had to wash the dishes. Um, because my mom told me. That's fine. No problem. That's great. I had to wash the dishes after school every day. I had to wash the dishes because my mom told me to. I had to wash the dishes before, whatever. But the idea is always try to make sure that when you give a sentence, give a long sentence to demonstrate your advanced level, not to maintain in the intermediate level. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, I 
think it was Dennis. Maybe I'm wrong, but I hope you remember the order. <laughs> yep, that's me. Okay. Okay, it says, well, I didn't have to do the exercises yesterday, but I did. That is correct. That is the correct grammar. Thank you. Um, needed to? I think that was Evelyn or Rafa. I think Evelyn. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, I thought I needed to buy more vegetables for today's dinner, but uh, there is a lot of them in the fridge. Very good. Only the auxiliary is not correct. Because you say vegetables is not correct. Is. Is is singular. Vegetables, plural. Ah, okay. So what is correct, Evelyn? Vegetable without S? No, there, not there is. There are. Because oh, okay, there, are. there are a lot of vegetables. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Evelyn. Very nice. Thank you. Rafa. I should have drove more slower and I drove. Very good, Rafa. But the comparative is not correct. Slow okay. is a small word. So the correct is only slower. Is not correct more. More are okay. for big words. Try again, Rafa. I should have drove slower and I drove. Good. Pronounce slower. Slower. Excellent. That is the correct pronunciation. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you. Um, uh, it was Anna, right? Or is Nelson? Anna, you were the had to? No. No. I think, okay. All right, I think that Sorry, was. Sorry, I couldn't find a mic. No, I was supposed to. That's. Oh, ah, okay, okay. All right. Um, is that okay? Any questions at this moment? I know George and Nelson came in a little bit late, but I hope that the examples that your partners gave you was okay. Um, I don't know, Nelson or George, do you have any questions? No, teacher. Uh, okay, great. Now, why is that important for today's class? Well, this is important for today's class because today we're going to be taking a look and using them. We're going to talk about your childhood, okay? And you're going to describe at school, at university, when you were a teenager, and what were the things that you were allowed, obligated, forced to do as an example. You don't have to make sentences. You're telling a story. Remember, the idea is not mechanical. The idea is natural. Natural, what happened? Oh, well, for example, when I was a, when I was a child oh, in my house, I had, to, I had to take out the garbage every Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday were the days that were, I was obligated to take out the garbage. But if I helped in the house, then I didn't have to stay in the house on Saturday and Sunday. I could go out with my friends. And this was really fun. One time we were riding a bicycle and I should have worn protection, but before nobody cared that this is the idea. You want to try to create as natural as possible and integrate them. You might not have the same fluency, that's okay. The important mm -hmm. is to integrate it in a natural story, in a natural conversation. <clears throat> it's okay. Or one more example. I think we're good. It's Thanks, okay. Guys. It's, it's okay. okay. We will try. That's what I like. Positive mentality. We will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm All not right. sure, uh, teacher, if you got to read my message. I just saw it right now. I'm looking okay. at it now. All right. Yes, about Thank Nicole. You. I just saw it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to put in the group WhatsApp. Nicole, what happened? Why didn't you come? I, no, it's okay. <laughs> All right. So remember, we're talking about your childhood, your adolescence, um, your university, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. It's not an obligation to share, you know, secrets when you are young, but whatever you feel comfortable with, okay? That's the idea. Here we go. Thank you. 
Nelson, you having some problem joining the group? Mm, not really. I was I'm waiting for that room to actually put me somewhere. But I went back here. You already I have. It was a... uh -huh, but you did, I don't think you you clicked on it. You clicked out because it, you were already accepted. There you go.
welcome. I will give you a little verb. So we may use when talking about problems. But to find the synonym for each. Recognizing problems. These verbs are often used to talk about problems. Aggravate a problem. Avoid a problem. Cause a problem. Deal with a problem. Identify a problem. Ignore a problem. Run into a problem. Solve a problem. Look at the following picture. Type two sentences using any of the verbs previously given. Okay, welcome back. I hope you had a nice chance to remember and to think about your childhood. Were there any funny stories, any interesting stories from your partners? Pretty much, yes. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Go ahead, tell us, Nelson. Well, I have a lovely chat with Anna and Patricia, and they were, they were telling us, but well, they were sharing that every single one of us has had a different experience as a child, right? Now, one of them basically was telling, specifically Anna, was telling us when she was a child that she had a, I don't say an, an accident, she fell. And she was a, I won't say trouble child or something that it, that couldn't stay, um, couldn't stay. Let's say that he was. She has to be moving around, and for some reason, their parents, her parents, choose to leave uh, his brother in charge of her, 
and he didn't do a pretty good job and he ends to have that accident but then god or something he is now still with us didn't have any problem after that accident and <clears throat> when it comes to patricia she was raised in a farm basically and she was telling us that she has to uh, get milk from the cows every morning and telling us an adventure at a time that she tried to get uh, milk directly from she tried to drink that the milk I would say directly from the cow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Patricia, did you drink milk directly from the cow? That fresh milk? Not the chair, not the chair. No fresh no. milk. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, currently, uh, milk uh, is not uh, healthy for me. I don't uh, tolerate milk. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. All right. Well, that's the idea. The idea was for you to have the opportunity to share and use the new vocabulary. In this moment, we're going to do some exercises together to make sure that we understand the usage of those expressions. Here in 2.2, our knowledge check, we have several different sentences. It's not a lot, there are only four, but I want you to read it and tell me what you understand. As an example, in number one, I shouldn't have invited them. Do you understand that you didn't invite them or do you understand that yes, you did invite them? The second one. The second one, okay. I invited them all right good what about the next one number two what do you think <clears throat> you told someone you told someone okay number three for the test. we were prepared for the test okay and number four jane was rude to me Okay, so we have several different answers. Let's take a look and see if we have them correct. Here, all of them are correct. Very good. Any questions about any of those expressions? No questions, teacher. No? All right, pretty easy, right? It's easy once you remember that all of them is just about doing the past. All it is, is that. Just making sure that it's the past. Let's take a look at our next topic. Today, we're going to be also looking at verbs, specific verbs or specific vocabulary that we use to describe problems, okay? Do you ever have problems at work, in your house, in your relationship? Everyone. I don't know. Everyone is quiet. Only you speak, George. Everybody <laughs> has the perfect life. The perfect life, George. You see? Everybody. No, not me. Not me, teacher. Not me. Every, mm, no problems at work. It's wonderful. No problems in the house. Oh, my goodness. No problem with the relationship. Wow. This is a marvelous group. Mm, wonderful lives. <laughs> yeah. We all have different types of problems. Today, we're going to learn how to express those different problems for different purposes. First, we're going to watch a small video on what are the different verbs that we use to describe those. Okay. Here, we're going to take a look at the verbs that go with the word problems. Welcome. I will give you a list of verbs that we may use when talking about problems. Try to find the synonyms for each. Recognizing problems. These verbs are often used to talk about problems. Aggravate a problem. Avoid a problem. Cause a problem. Deal with a problem. Identify a problem. Ignore a problem. Run into a problem. Solve a problem. Okay. First, let's take a look at those words and list. Are there any of those that you don't understand what it means with the word problem?
deal, deal with? Deal with is that you face the problem and that you have to confront the situation. This is deal with a problem. Run into? Run into a problem is maybe you have a project or an activity and you have everything planned and then oof, you come <clears throat> across a problem. This is run into a problem. It's, you didn't expect, but now you have a problem. I will say that I don't understand that, but I will say that I have never used it before is aggravate, which is pretty much making the problem worse, right? Yes, that is correct. Aggravate the problem. Mm -hmm. Many so that's teacher. a word that I haven't used. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dennis? Yes, uh, just to make sure when you when it says cause a problem, is is like to say make a problem, right? We, we may use both. You may not use both. Uh, make a problem is not, uh, is not, doesn't exist in English. You don't make a problem. You cause a problem. Cause a problem. All right. Mm -hmm. That's good. And yes, aggravate a problem was to make the problem worse. Many times, this is especially true with medical conditions. When people don't go to the doctor and the people self-medicate, or they ignore the symptoms, they ignore the problem, and they wait and wait, they aggravate the problem. Right, Patricia? Right, teacher. You think? That's it. You yes. make it worse. They think, many people think, if they avoid going to the doctor, if they avoid the problem, it doesn't exist. But in reality, most of the times, they only aggravate it. Yes, of course. Are the other words okay? Rafa, you're very quiet tonight. I don't hear you say anything. Everything is okay? Are you playing PlayStation? Are you on no. Xbox? <laughs> what happened? No, okay. I don't. I pay attention and I I have no. Okay, okay. You see, I see Rafa. Mm, I think Rafa had the chair like, oh, I have the PlayStation chair. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see what we're going to do now with the other activity. Ignore a problem. Run into a problem. Solve a problem. Look at the following picture. Type two sentences using any of the verbs previously given. Okay. As you can see, that picture has a lot of things. Let me go back just a little bit. See if I can get it back. Hmm. It seems that picture disappeared. I'll stop sharing it in that case. Okay. Let me try one more before we have using any of the verbs previously given okay i'm going to send that image to the whatsapp also you can see it in your that way you can see it in your group in your whatsapp or you can take a look in also in the platform the idea is with your partners we're going to make groups and we're going to talk about first what is the problem what is happening for this, remember, try to use your English. Do not use the Spanish. If you don't know how to say it, try to describe it in another way. As an example, you see there is water on his head, correct? What is this called? When there is water on the person's head, what is that called? You see it right here? Yes, teacher. What is the name, Celine? What is the action? Um, flicking. Excellent. The, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I didn't see who who said it. Patricia, was that you? I said tearing. Tearing. Mm, not tearing. No. It's a, another word. That fruit is like water is leaking from the roof. Correct, mm -hmm. Anna. There you go. Excellent. For her head. Yeah. For his head. So that's the idea. You you want to try to use the correct vocabulary. Oh, the word is leaking. 
But if you don't know how to describe it, or you don't know the correct word, you are still going to speak in English. Oh, water is leaking. Perfect. I don't know, but there is water on his head. That's the idea. The person will understand. Remember, the objective many times, especially in social English, is for the person to understand you, not to have the perfect vocabulary, but to make sure that your idea is communicated clearly. And by that, you have to describe your synonyms or antonyms many times. Okay. Now, I think it was Anna who said a roof, correct, Anna? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. I just want to explain a little bit. There is a difference between roof and ceiling. The roof is outside your house, the one outside. And the ceiling is the same idea, but inside the house. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So it's leaking from the ceiling. Okay. Correct. Correct. Thank but you. like I said, you see, the idea is the person will understand you because you are using your English. So right now you can watch the video or see that section in the video 2.4. You can see it in the WhatsApp group, but you have to do two things. Number one, you have to describe the problem. Number two, you have to give the solution, okay? As Anna said the first example, Anna is going to tell us the solution. Anna, you said there is water leaking from the ceiling. What is the solution? <laughs> to get the ceiling fixed or to move or to put something there so that it doesn't fall on his head. <laughs> ah, good. Mm, I know you want to say, how do you say that? The, the thing that he would put, you said, put something there. Put what? Put what? <laughs> I know. I saw, I, I saw Anna's face. <laughs> I want to say wakal, but the teacher is going to get angry. <laughs> put a wakal on his head. <laughs> uh -huh. Like this. Yeah, a wakal. Yeah. All right. Great job. <laughs> that is actually called a Some people bucket. say, say paila, though. There ah, was someone yes. here from mm -hmm. San Miguel, and they, I have a roommate. She's from San Miguel, and she says paila instead of wakal. So I guess you could say that, too. Yeah, I think for San Salvador, it's a little bit different. Um, paila, we, we tend to use it different. Yeah, but... we use like a flat dish. Yeah. I keep saying that to her, and she's like, no, that's a wakal. And I'm like, no, that's a paila. That's a little... yeah. No, it's not the same. Tell her, anyway, to go, uh -huh. tell her to go to the market and buy one and see if it's true. They, let's see what they give her, right? Yeah, because exactly. She's telling me, give me the paila. And I'm like, well, you're not going to put water on it because it's flat. And she's like, no, the paila isn't like like the one that you can put water on. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not in here. Anyway. <laughs> well, that's the idea. As you can see, there are many different situations in that image. With your group, you're going to do the two things describe the problem, what is it, and then, of course, give a solution. What can be done to fix it, remedy it, or solve that problem? Before we make any our groups, is there any vocabulary you would like me to help you with? Is there any word, for example, like Anna, she didn't know how to say wakal, it's in the chat, so now you know how to say it correctly. Okay, are there any other words before you begin your group? No? Okay, I believe you. Let's make our groups and problem solutions, problems and solution to all of those. When we finish the problem and solutions for the picture, then we talk about your house. What has been problems in your house? Electrical, garden, flowers, doors, and what have you done to solve it? Maybe the washing machine, maybe the sink, maybe the whatever. The idea is try to speak naturally for our day-to-day -day problems and solutions. Okay.
deal with a problem, identify a problem, ignore a problem, run into a problem, solve a problem. Look at the following picture. Type two sentences using any of the verbs previously given. required but I didn't do it. Hi, we're about to study past models and phrase the models of obligation. Stay and watch the explanation. Past models and phrasal models of obligation. Should have, was supposed to, had to, I needed to all describe obligations in the past, although they sometimes have different uses. I should have stayed home and studied. It was a good idea, but I didn't do it. I was supposed to be studying this weekend. It was required, but I didn't do it. I had to wear a uniform. We were forced to do this. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. There was no obligation. I thought I needed to have more clothes. I thought this was necessary. Past models and phrasal models. Should have is followed by a past participle. Whereas was, were, supposed to, had to, didn't have to, I needed to, are followed by the simple form of the verb. Had to describe strong obligation in the past and suggest there was no choice. I had to water my plants was, were, not supposed to, suggest an expectation that the action was required or prohibited. It is comparable in meaning to wasn't, weren't allowed to. He was supposed to graduate last year. Should have suggest that the action was advisable, but was not done. Should not have suggest that the action was not advisable but was done. He should have learned English before. Needed, did they need to, suggest that an action was necessary, but there was choice about doing it or not. She needed to exercise. Didn't have to means that there was not obligation to do the action. They didn't have to wake up early. Complete the following sentences with your own information. Then, compare your answers in class with a partner. Welcome. I will give you a list of verbs that we may use when talking about problems. Try to find the synonyms for each. Recognizing problems. These verbs are often used to talk about problems. Aggravate a problem. Avoid a problem, cause a problem, deal with a problem, identify a problem, ignore a problem, run into a problem, solve a problem. Look at the following picture. Type two sentences using any of the verbs previously given. Okay, let's take a look. You should have several answers, things that are happening, destructions in that house. That house is ready to explode. What are the problems and what are some of the solutions that you came up with? About the picture, teacher, or about our house? Whichever one that you would like to. For me, the most important is that you are speaking correctly. So whatever is easier for you. Anna was telling, I was with Anna and Nelson, and Anna was telling us that he, uh, she has some issues with her internet. So she's renting uh, a room, and actually her room is in the second floor, 
so he doesn't re she doesn't receive you know like the proper service or the correct signal uh of the internet so she has called a lot of time to 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 the company but it hasn't been resolved yet mm. and anna the problem is slow internet or the problem is no internet mm, well the problem most of the times it's that the internet is very slow. Uh, sometimes the connection is very poor and even small videos will not load. So it depends. Sometimes it's very, very, very slow and other times it's almost like non-existent. Mm. Do you have Tigo? Claro, actually. <laughs> I guess there's no solution because one fails, the other one fails. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it really, it's really hard. Depends on some of the areas. Um, yeah. It, the only thing is, if you have a weak signal, it's your your router is far from from you, or it's close to where you have your your cell phone, or it's far from where i am i'm in the second floor i'm in the bedroom here in the second floor and i was telling um the guys that um we have a repeater so like this is not my family home right i rent mm -hmm. so the people here they have a router in the living room and the living room is far away from my bedroom so they have a repeater in the kitchen we can say which is closer to my bedroom and um, well, even the guy from Claro, the technician said the, the repeater is not the proper repeater for the router. So they're not compatible. And we told them, like we told them, hey, this is obviously why it's not working. But I can tell you that the problems are still happening. Sometimes they stop, like other times we have good signal, we forget about it. And then other times, again, it's a pain having to reset the router every now and then. And I just put that on my cell phone because it's stressful not to be able to watch like a small video, like 15 seconds without it being looping. So, so I was telling them about that problem in my house. Okay. All right. Well, great solution. Great solution. Put, you know, you, you put on data on your cell phone and you try to solve it, things like that. Great. Anybody else has faced problems in their house or the image and how did they solve it? I just would like to add something or probably an advice. <laughs> well, it's not it's not a joke, but Starling is, is coming to El Salvador right now. So probably that is going to solve your issue. <laughs> uh, that's another company or? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the, it's the Elon Musk, Elon Elon company. Musk companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's gonna be a satellite internet. So mm -hmm. you are not gonna be like the cable or the fiber optic. So it's gonna be just like your cell phone, but it's gonna be uh, a faster internet. So oh, okay. Coming All like right. in three months. Okay, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Thank you. So no, and that's right, Dennis. It's great. It's a great recommendation. Um, it it's the the question is how does it work um is it just for your cell phone is it gonna replace directly for your house how do you you know like all of those little issues are the ones that we have to come up with because if it's like netflix in el salvador the people share the password with everybody and, <laughs> and then that's the idea so but it's supposed to be super fast that's what i heard but you know the experience with claro antigo is mm, is never super fast all right, great. Anybody else? Uh, any other problems and solutions? Wow, a lot of perfect lives. I love it, you guys. You guys, <laughs> I need to take you to church. That way you can predicate how you have the perfect life. That's what I love. I mean, this is amazing. There we got it. Now, actually, I, I would like to to mention something i would like to bring something to the conversation because in my group i was with um rafael and selena and at the end uh, rafael was telling us that he had a problem 
at his home because his grass, he, he actually what I understood is that he doesn't have the option to water his, his grass because the water is very expensive and he has that problem. So I was thinking, hey, uh, how are you gonna solve that problem? Because if the water is too much expensive in summer, there is no option. So you gotta wait until the winter, right? So I was thinking on that because sometimes I complain that my bill is like 20, $20, but if I see my bill, $80, I think that I'm gonna, I don't know. <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's it it's really it's very strange um and everybody has different i i am on um, unlike uh what is it carlos or sorry Javier that has that george george is the one who has that problem dennis or who oh that was rafael rafael, rafael sorry rafael unlike rafael it, in my case it's the opposite my water is free so I, I only have to pay, I have unlimited amount of water. I can, I can give water to free to everybody. And I only pay $2.39 because on the, the, the house where I live, it was built so long ago that Anda, it's cheaper for Anda to give me free water than for Anda to change the pipes to correct all of the things. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you are, are so lucky. Yeah, there are four houses and the four of us are the only ones that have free water because it's cheaper to give us the water than to change and break the pipes and do everything for only for the four houses. Mm -hmm. so, and Rafael is gone. You should have told him. Maybe you can sell him I was going to say, water. Rafael, yeah. bring some water, come to the house. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, it was great uh, having you here. I'm glad you enjoyed a little bit, had a chance. Before we leave, uh, would anybody like to share anything or say anything before uh, we have enjoy our weekend? No? Well, continue enjoying your great weekend. Continue practicing. On Monday, we're going to see if you remember. And on Monday, we're going to use the different verbs correctly with problems. So relax, and Monday we see if we really remember how to describe problems. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. teacher. Have a great night. Have a good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Have a nice weekend, guys. You too, guys. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you.